To understand this incident, we must know a little bit about the generator power output and fuel feeding system in ship. Generator, auxiliary engine. Generator which is generating the power for ship, creating power pass through 6,600 voltage switchboard. This routed through two parallel step-down transformers to convert this high voltage 6,600 voltage into 440 voltage. If any transformer fails, the other transformer come online when we keep change over switch in auto mode. Fuel supply for auxiliary engine. Air-driven pump. It has air-driven pump supply fuel for starting the auxiliary engine, which is located 25 feet beneath of auxiliary engine platform. Thereafter engineers will bring the main supply pump online. Flushing pump. Also one flushing pump connected with auxiliary engine for only the flushing purpose for flushing the auxiliary engine. It is located 55 steps down from the engine control room. Main booster pump. Main pump, it gets fuel from the dedicated main booster pumps. It is able to start automatically after the blackout happened. But other pumps such as flushing pump and air-driven pump doesn't have this facility. On March 26, 2024 motor vessel Dolly crashed into and topples the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Event took the six lives and obstruct the channel. Result United States incurred more than $100 million. It was entirely avoidable but due to the improper maintenance of electrical and mechanical system lead to the disaster by unseaworthy ship. None of the four means propeller, rudder, anchor, bow thruster available to control. Root cause. Vibration. Vessel had vibration issues for prolonged periods same notified to the management by previous captain in his hand over report on May 23, 2023. Chief officer reported in his handover notes that constant vibration was causing the cargo lashing above the engine room spaces to work loose. First step down transformer brackets was broken due to high vibration on board, same repaired by the welding on board. Also it was found that jury fitted cargo lashing chain turnbuckle hook against nearest bulkhead to prevent the vibration of the equipment. During the post inspection, it was found also that wires had loose end electrical connection in circuitry that necessary to keep the circuit breakers for the number one step down transfer from tripping. Just before the four minutes, as said earlier, due to the higher vibration, wires got loose end and first step down transformer tripped, but number two step down transformer didn't come to load automatically because the auto change over switch was in manual. The photo taken after the incident where they reset back to auto mode, during the incident it was set to manual. All power stopped, at dark hours engineers manually resettled first step down transformer which took full minute. It was noticed during investigation that, ship team didn't use the main booster pump for feeding number 3 and number 4 auxiliary engine, instead they have used flushing pump which is not a made for this main fuel supply purpose. So automatic restarting of pump was also not possible. So engineers ran down 55 steps from engine control room to the flushing pump to restart, which was not startable. So they have started the air-driven fuel supply pump to feed the auxiliary engine which is located 25 feet beneath the auxiliary engine. Supply amount of fuel is not enough for both auxiliary engines so fuel starvation might happen. As they have wasted more than minute, the emergency generator supposed to start and giving power within 45 seconds of power failure, but it started after the minute passed. When the power available to the helm, not engine, only the power to the steering system was available, pilot gave order to steer the ship under the center of the span of the bridge. Meanwhile they have started number 2 auxiliary engine brought light to the ship prior collision. By using the vessel momentum they tried to steer in between the pillar. This is pilot from Dai. The ship is heading towards bridge. Close the gate. Save people we lost power. Please send tugboats. Meanwhile due to the fuel starvation second blackout happened because the fuel supply by the small air-driven pump. So pilot gave order to release the port anchor in hope of pulling vessel away from the bridge, but anchor was not ready for immediate release. While waits for anchor, pilot gave order for apply full power of bow thruster as a last attempt, but it was told to pilot that the bow thruster was not available. Crew started lowering the port anchor just 30 seconds before the collision. At 0128 Lieutenant ship collided the bridge.
On 1st April 2024, owner and manager filed the petition for exoneration from owed limitation of liability up to 44 million US dollars. US court replied for the owners and technical managers limitation of liability. You now ask court to limit your liability to less than 44 million. You sent an ill-prepared crew on an objectively unseaworthy vessel to navigate in US waters. They did so to reap benefit of conducting business in American ports. Yet they cut corners in ways that risked lines and infrastructure. Those responsible for the vessel must be held and punitive damages should be imposed to deter such misconduct. Technical manager has fully and irrevocably subjected itself to the jurisdiction of this courts and laws judge said that as per 33 CFR 164.11 owner master or person in charge of each vessel underway shall ensure that the vessel anchor ready to let go in emergency.